How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. Now it's Friday again, which means it's luckily weekend. So if you had a long week of like a lot of work, it's time to relax and just enjoy yourself for a bit, play a bit of games, watch some movies or just go out with your friends. But it also means it's time for another tech news video where I go over all of the tech news that happened in the previous week. Some interesting ones, some not so interesting, but I am going to go over most of them in this video. Now, just a disclaimer, in these videos, I do not go over everything in depth to like the nits and crannies about everything. It's mostly a summary of most of the topics. So if you guys want to read up a bit more about the topics that I mentioned in these videos, please just follow the links in the video description where you can go read up on the full entire topic and just learn a bit more. So with all of that being said, let's get into the tech news video right after this. Do you live in South Africa and want to get yourself some awesome new gaming products? Well, go check out Rebel Tech. They have extremely low prices and they stock all the major brands like Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, Corsair and many more. So go check out rebeltech.co.za to go get the products you are looking for at a low price. Okay, so first up we have some new CPUs from Intel. Now it's not a ninth generation or anything like that, but it is some additional coffee-like CPUs. Now we already have the CPUs like the 8700K, the 8700, the 8600K and just some i3s. But now we have news that Intel is launching some new non-K CPUs and they're ranging from the i5s all the way down to Celerons. So these new CPUs will be ranging from around $220 all the way down to about $50. So we have seen that they are going to launch the i5-8600, the non-K. That's going to cost around $220. It's going to have six cores, six threads, and it's going to run at a base clock of 3.1 gigahertz. Next up, we have the Core i5-8500, which is going to cost around $200. It has six cores, six threads, and it's going to run around three gigahertz at base and then uh, next up uh, we do also have an i3 the 8300 which is going to cost around 135 dollars and it uh, has four cores four threads and has a base lock of 3.7 gigahertz and then we do also get some pendiums and celerons if you do want to read up a bit more on those uh, you can just follow the links in the video description again but now for the cpus we only have the base clocks but no turbo boosts as of yet we'll only probably see those once the CPUs are officially released but we can expect these CPUs to have a pretty decent turbo boost because the new 8th generation CPUs do quite have a beefy turbo boost clock so we might see some new uh, 4.5 gigahertz on the 8600 or something around there which is going to be very nice for a 6 core and 6 thread CPU and even for the i3-8300 a 4 core 4 thread boosting to about 4.5 maybe 4.8 around there is not going to be bad especially for $135 that might be the new uh, budget range a uh, gaming CPU. And then next up, we have been covering AMD's Raven Ridge launch here on the tech news videos for quite a few months now. And they are almost out as well because they're going to be released in April. We have been seeing the APUs released, but we're still waiting for those Ryzen 3 to Ryzen 7 CPUs. But now we have also been getting some benchmark leaks for some of these new Raven Ridge CPUs. And one of them being an engineering sample with a predicted that it's their new Ryzen 5 2600 CPU. Now the only difference between the 2600 and the 1600 is about 200 megahertz in core and in boost clocks. That's pretty much it. But now for these benchmarks, we have seen a result on Geekbench that the single core performance, it scored 4,269, which is about 14.5% higher than the 1600. And the multi-core performance scored 20,102, which is about which is about 31.5% higher than the 1600. 
So from these benchmarks, we can see that there's a quite an increase in performance between the 2600 and the 1600, and there's only about 200 megahertz increase, which is about 5% between the two. So there's not really a lot of increase compared to the performance increase that we're getting. But now, of course, we will have to wait and see once these are actually officially released and then how they perform in real world and in gaming benchmarks and if they actually have that 14 to 31 percent performance increase we will have to wait and see once they actually are out and we can test them out ourselves and then next up Earlier this week, Tesla, as most of you guys know, with the electric car company and everything cool electric, has actually been hacked. Now, with these hacking, it wasn't really anything where they stole some personal data from their users or from their company. Instead, the hackers actually used their Amazon cloud service to instead mine for cryptocurrencies. Redlock, the security firm that had alerted Tesla about their breach, reported yesterday that Tesla had its login credentials stored on a system that was not protected by a password. This lack in security is why Tesla was able to be hacked and their system used to do some of this crypto jacking. Now, after a few hours, Tesla did sort it out completely and they did confirm that no user information was leaked at all. It was just their CPUs being used to mine. So don't worry about that if you own a Tesla or you have anything with Tesla. It's completely fine. Now, this is not the first time that a big company like this has actually been used and hacked for crypto jacking. This has been uh, happening a few times now. We've seen Starbucks Wi-Fi uh, doing the same. We've seen some ads on YouTube even that if you watch the ad, it's going to run the crypto jacking script and use your CPU to mine cryptocurrencies in the, that uh, duration of the ad. And then of course, the probably the biggest crypto jack that has happened so far is where a bunch of government websites was infected by this crypto jacking plugin where it was was installed on thousands of the websites where all of the people who viewed the website was being crypto jacked to use the CPUs to mine for Monero. So it's not the first time and it probably won't be the last as well. So if you do go onto a website and you feel that your computer is slowing down massively, open up your task manager just to see what your CPU usage is at. And if so, just close that tab completely and you can even report that uh, to the website publisher as well and then next up just some few topics that i'm gonna go over one person bought 400 million dollars worth of bitcoin now this was back in february 6 where it cost about six thousand dollars per bitcoin so if you calculate that that's about forty one thousand bitcoins that that person bought and now, of course, it's back over $10,000 again for a Bitcoin, which if you calculate that, that's about 66% increase, which is $264 million that he already made back. So that's quite an increase. And if you see that it's going to go over $12,000, he made 100% of his investment back, which is really crazy. Then along with that, last week at the International Solid State Circuit Conference in San Francisco, Intel unveiled its plans for a new prototype discrete GPU. Now this new GPU is going to run on the 14 nanometer process and it's going to have 1.5 billion transistors and it is going to clock around 50 to 400 megahertz with a turbo boost at double that. Now, of course, we don't have any information about this CPU. Of course, it's still a completely prototype, uh, but it's not going to be for high performance. It's more going to be for efficient use. So we'll probably see it more in some entry level desktops and then some uh, notebooks as well. So once they are actually released, I'll give you some more information. But for now, that's all we have. Then next up, Microsoft is releasing their new Spring Creators update, which is mostly more focused toward workstation uses. So this new Creators update is more focused for Windows 10 Pro workstations with a new power mode that is called Ultimate Power Mode that will add a higher priority on performance. 
Now, because of this, we're not really going to see this mode on battery power systems like notebooks or some smaller all-in-ones. Uh, it's not going to be worth it for the, for the power usage. So we'll most likely not be able to see those uh, this mode on those. And then along with that, we will also see none of these gaming and non-related applications that we get pre-installed with Windows on Windows 10 Pro and then Windows 10 Enterprise systems as well. For those, we're going to see a more workstation focused applications and not any of these useless crapware applications that we get on our systems now. And then for the last topic, if you guys are watching my few of my streams or you are one of the millions of people who are playing Fortnite, the new Season 3 has been released with some new updates to the game. So first up, we have Turbo Building, which allows you to hold down your primary fire and uh, add continuous placing for your building pieces. So you don't have to click the entire time if you want to place something on the ground. Then we also get auto change materials, where if you build and you run out of resources, it's going to automatically switch to your next available resource, which is going to be very handy uh, if you do run out of a lot of your resources very quickly. And then next up, a very, very handy feature that I added is that you are able to build through stuff. So if there's a log on the ground or a tree in your way, usually you could not have placed your building material there now if you place your material there it's going to destroy that object and so with that you're able to place your materials almost anywhere which is really really handy because there's so many times where i wanted to place something and something else was in the way and i don't know what but it didn't want to place on the ground so this is very handy and then finally of course you just get the new hand cannon which kind of resembles the desert eagle but if you guys do play some fortnite up to your game enjoy the new season uh, three and then yeah just enjoy it but now that's pretty much it for this week in take. I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, share, subscribe and comment like always. Also, if you guys have any other topics that you find throughout the week that you want me to mention, please let me know in the comments down below or on any of my social media um, prof links, whatever, and I'll try to add them in. Uh, but anyway, that's pretty much it again. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will check all of you next time. Cheers, guys.